hello hiya you're welcome to adora zone one more time um it's past 9 p.m here i think it's almost nine half nine maybe 9 30 or so and i'm just getting ready to go to bed but um before i go to bed i just decided to share this story with you guys hmm. it was how i was fooled twice in my desperation to get a visa to travel out of the country like two times my god i was fooled two times like they say fool me once it's okay but fool me twice like i don't know <laughs> who goes ahead and allows herself to be fooled like more than once anyway i was so desperate and very young so it was so easy to manipulate me like this okay that was um back then in 2004 stroke five yeah at about that time I, all, in short, all I had in my mind then was just travel, 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 travel. I didn't even want to know the country. I was not just interested in where I was traveling to. I was just like, just let me just travel. Let me just travel abroad. To so me, oh, that time, anywhere apart from my country was abroad. No matter where the country is, I just wanted to live. So I came in contact with this guy. He claimed he is a visa agent that, you know, that he, he knew somebody that knew somebody that knows somebody else that works at the embassy. So me, I was like, hey, ah, this one has connection, or at least, you know, you know somebody that knows somebody, he has embassy connection, so it would be very easy for me to get my visa. So I went ahead, and this guy was seriously giving me hopes, man. The guy was giving me lyrics. Today, he would tell me he wants to sign the form. Tomorrow, he would tell me he needs to see a commissioner. Next, tomorrow, he would tell me the ambassador wants to speak to him. You know, they have to get my visa as soon as... Blah, 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 blah. And me, because I was so naive and desperate and most of these words he was actually saying in fact this guy actually rehearsed the whole thing he was so perfect in this whole you know, scam he was so i couldn't even at all like, like i couldn't even pick up any, any fault at all to me then maybe because i was so desperate I believed every word he was saying. As in, they all sounded so real. Because he was actually using some terms eh, that could, you know, you would relate or you kind of connect with, um, you know, embassy, embassy stuff. He was telling me things like ambassador, he will go and get the visa, he will get the application form, he will book an appointment for me, he will do this, he will do that. But first of all, I have to get my ticket, I have to, aha. So all these things were sounding like, ah, this guy knows what he's saying. So, we went ahead, started this visa thing and he told me i have to pay a certain amount of money me i didn't have the money you but you know when you're so desperate for something you will just go out all of your you will go out of your way to to get that thing so i was working and back then i used to do some bits of modeling here and there so i was just gathering all the modeling money i had anytime i have any little job i'll just save the money i'll keep it I'll give it to this man. Today he will tell me, oh, the ambassador wants to stamp something. He needs money to do it. I will give to him. Tomorrow he will tell me, oh, they are taking all the application forms. He needs my passport. He needs to take the passport to the, um, the, to the embassy. They want to stamp something. They want to sign. Ambassador wants to take photocopy. You know, ah, I was dishing out money. From nowhere, I didn't have this money, but I was just making sure that I provided the money as... As, as long as I am going to travel out of the country, it's fine. So this guy kept doing this, doing this, collecting money, collecting money, collecting money, giving me stories. I was giving it to him. And it even got to a point to, this guy actually came to our family house then. We hosted this idiot. Like, we prepared breakfast for this boy. Hey, God. We prepared breakfast, eh? The breakfast I was supposed to eat that morning. Just because he told me, he told me he was around the neighborhood, my neighborhood. He told me he was around my neighborhood that morning. You know, that he just wanted to come and see me briefly and see if I could sign some forms. He was always coming with some formal, formal stories. He wanted me to sign one application form. I should sign one thing. I have to thumbprint here, thumbprint there, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, oh, come, bring it, bring it. I'm at home, I'm at home. So this guy came home and then the breakfast I left for myself because it was in my family, everybody has, they, we cooked, everybody had their own share. My share now, because I had a guest, I said, okay, oh, since I didn't prepare anything for you before, it's my share. And this idiot really sat down. You know, like sometimes when you're eating, you tell somebody, come and join me. 
How many of us do this thing? You say, come and join me. But you know in your heart of hearts, you know right down there in your mind, you're not really inviting that person. You're just saying it so that it will not look as if you're selfish or it will not sound as if you are eating, you did not invite the person or you. So, I was expecting him to say, oh no, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, I'm okay. But this guy actually sat down and ate my food that morning. Upon this calm, he was calming me. He ate my breakfast. Anyway, he finished with his story. He told me that he brought some papers. He wanted me to sign something. And okay, I did it. I signed because I thought, okay, we are still in the process of my visa. At the end of the day, he finished. He left. It was now the usual story. I'm going, anytime I call him to ask him, how far now? The thing, the next thing he will tell me, oh yeah, I'm going to speak to the ambassador. Ambassador just called me. I'm going to talk to the commissioner. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that story 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 at a point this thing dragged for so long something just told me that this is getting too long am i sure this guy knows what he's doing you know so i stopped disturbing him because i just felt okay give him space when he's done when it is time to go to embassy and then do the interview he will let me know on one fateful night I was with my mom that very night. I remember very, very vividly. And you know, in Africa, especially in Nigeria, we don't really sometimes our electricity we, we we kind of struggle with it. Sometimes you have electricity today and tomorrow you don't have it. So this particular night, there was no light. Like everywhere was dark. There was electricity issues, and I was just lying down on the floor with my mom, and all of a sudden. My phone rang and it was this guy. Now, it was very odd of him to call me at night because it was a very, very formal business I had with him. I, I wasn't having any personal relationship or whatever. So him calling me at night was a, a bit strange. So I quickly stood up, grabbed my phone and I was like, hello, hello. Because I was like expecting something, you know, maybe what happened, what happened? And this guy just said... Um, you know, there's something I want to tell you. I just hope you will not be angry. And I was like, what is it? At this point, my heart was already racing. When he said, I hope you will not be angry, I just felt something was wrong. But I wasn't too sure what he was about to say. And this guy threw the bombshell. He said, you know what? Right now, I'm at the airport. And I'm actually traveling to London tonight. Don't worry. When I get to London, we'll continue your application. And I said, come, 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 hold on. What are you talking about? You're traveling to where? Uh, he said, yeah, he's traveling to London. Uh, don't worry. When I get there, don't worry. Your application, your application issue is not um, closed yet. We will still continue. I will, I, will, I, will, I will keep in touch with you. I will keep in touch with you. Eh? I was like, wait, 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 hold on, what did you say? And he was like, yeah, I'll keep in touch with you. And and I was about asking him, like, so, that was not our agreement. You didn't tell me you were traveling so soon. You didn't tell me you were going to keep my my application issue on hold. Like, wh what do I do from here? Where do I go? What do I, what, what, what am I supposed to contact? Like, what's, what's next for me? And this idiot dropped the phone. Huh. It was as if the, the floor should just open and swallow me that night. I felt this cold shiver from my head down to my toes. It was, it was like rapture had just taken place. I didn't believe that this guy was going to do that. And a lot of questions came to me. I was like, oh, I think this guy has actually been planning his own visa since. And maybe he actually wanted money to complete his process. Or maybe he needed money to buy his ticket. Or maybe he needed money to just, you know, package himself and get out. And that was why he was collecting my money and pretending he was actually doing one visa connection things like that for me. Ah! I just said to myself, hey, this is Koro Koro broad daylight robbery this is somebody just robbed me hey <laughs> of my hard end sweat and you know when someone does something nasty to you and you're so helpless sometimes you just wish you could fight back you wish you could revenge you wish you could do something that will hurt the person but at that point i was just weak because 
this guy in the first place is not even here. Like, even if I need to take up the case or I need to report him to the police or whatever, he's out of the country. So where am I going to start from? I felt so, 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 so bad that night. Anyway, that was it. He traveled out and he never called back. He never kept in touch. That was how my money just went down the drain, like magic. That was the first one. Disappointment number two. This one, <laughs> his own is even more, I don't know, <laughs> his own is even more, uh, will I say, funny. Because he came under the guise of a religious leader. Like, you know, under the guise of, I don't want to, I don't want to mock him. But he came, he pretended, or he came, or he, uh, he, he introduced himself to me as a pastor. So, at that point... Even though I was fooled initially, when this one came to me as number one, as a pastor, and number two, he's a married man, you know, it gave me the confidence that, oh, this one is a bit, he looks a bit um, responsible than the other guy that was not married. And then secondly, there was something about this one that kind of made me believe he was actually genuine. Number one, this second man has a properly structured office, like he has an office who... He has a place you can actually go and meet him. And then if anything happens, you have a place you can go and arrest him. Or you can take the police to. Or you can just do something. So when I saw the office, I was like, okay, at least there's something on ground. Or like the other one that you used to meet on the street. Sometimes he would tell me, eh, meet me at um, this eatery. Meet me at this takeaway joint. Meet me here. Let's sign this form. Meet me there. Let's do your passport. You know, stories. But this one has a place. So I said, okay, fine. I felt a bit um, comfortable with it. Secondly, he said he's a religious leader. That one also kind of warmed my heart because I felt, oh, he's going to have the fear of God since, you know, he's not going to do anything nasty. Number three, he's married. I felt comfortable with that. Okay, yeah, maybe because he's married, he's going to be a bit more responsible and serious. So I went ahead with this one. I didn't even know that this one has <laughs> more serious vibes than the first one. Like, if you see where he's rapping visa raps like was giving me eh visa lyrics he was he was seriously talking eh how he's going to go to un how he's going to talk to unesco how he's going to do this eh ah i was thinking that i've heard it all i never knew that this one eh his mouth was full of sugar very sweet he can he can sell snow to you in winter and you will you will buy it He gave me the impression that he knows, he goes to U U United Nations, he has connection with United Nations, he has connection with uh, UNESCO. He gave me the impression that he, has, he goes from one country to the other, doing lectures and seminars on how to travel. In fact, when you get to his office, eh, he actually has pictures that proves he does all these things. Like, I saw some pictures of him with some, you know, white people i think because i think he himself he has actually traveled so he, maybe he goes to some places or some shops or whatever and he takes pictures with white people and then he will bring it home to come and deceive gullible people like me that was so desperate to travel and then you know back then now when you see someone abroad maybe the pictures someone abroad with a white person all you just feel is that oh this person has arrived so the impression i had then because the picture i saw on his or in his office were pictures of him abroad with white people and he was formally dressed in suits so i just thought maybe oh he ha he went for one meeting or one seminar or one what lecture or whatever that had to do with traveling and that was why he was there so he actually knows what he's saying i didn't know that all this was another format to this was a Pure make believe Nollywood movie. So I believe this guy went ahead with the process. We continued as usual. They will talk about, you know, bringing your visa, your pa passport. He's going to take your passport to the embassy. He knows someone at the embassy that is going to fix it for you. I don't even need to go to for interview. In fact, when he said, I don't need to go for interview, if only I was thinking with my brain intact, I would have known 
that it was a lie. Because I don't know of any country that doesn't do interview. Apart from, I think, America that time. I think it was only... No, no. It was America. America, you go for an interview. Yeah, UK. Even UK, you don't... There's no... Like, at that time, UK, you don't really need to go for an interview. You just package your documents and you submit them. Yeah, but every other country, you need to go for an interview for the visa process or whatever. And then this guy was telling me stories. Eh, that, you know, when he takes the passport to the embassy, they are going to stamp it. That's because of his connection. They are going to add extra months for me. That if, for instance, I'm applying to go for... Because at that time, the countries I, the country I wanted to really go to was France. I really wanted to go to France. Not just because I had any special attachment with France, but I wanted to go to any Schengen country. So I just felt, okay, any country, any Schengen country, any EU country, I have the visa. Even if I have um, a German, German, German visa, I can from there go to France. If I have Spanish visa, I can from there move to France, and then to France, you know, that kind of a thing. So I never for once had any other country in mind. It was just any country within the Schengen, um, you know, group. So he told me then that uh, because of his connection, if I apply for two months, because of him, they will add an extra one month. And I was like, are you that popular? Are you such a special person there? He said, ah, that's, don't I see the proof? He was pointing to the pictures on the wall. The pictures where he, he, he the pictures he took with, um, with white people, like in um, lecture or whatever. He was trying to tell me that, oh, he knows these people. He has connections with people. The people that make things happen at the embassy. So it's going to happen for me. Okay, I relax again. And then that was it. We continued. He kept asking for money to do this, money to go there. He has to go to Abuja to sign one paper. He has to go to Lagos to do one thing. And then the usual money-making machine. Still producing money from nowhere. I didn't have this money. I was not a businesswoman. I didn't, I was not into any kind of, you know, apart from the little modeling I was doing, there was nothing that was pumping money for me like this. I was struggling. I was sweating to get this money. And these people kept collecting it from me because I was desperate. So at the end of the day, this man kept collecting money. And then one day, after I have spent so much money on this issue, I went to the office. I've been calling this man. Okay, yeah, before then, I kept calling this man, calling. He doesn't pick his phone again. He wasn't picking. So I said, okay, it's better for me to just go to the office and say things for myself. Let me know what exactly is happening. Why are you not returning my calls? I even dropped messages for you. You do not respond. I went with my mom. So I was, I was even happy I went with my mom on that very day because she was actually my shock absorber. I would have fainted that day after seeing what I saw. When we got to the office, we knocked on the door. Knocked and knocked and knocked and knocked. Mr. Yuen, there was nowhere to be found. Then we went out. We saw a, a, a lady in the in, very close to the building, and we asked her. We described this man to her, and she was like, "I'm sorry, there is nobody like that here." Ah. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> I just said to myself, again, that was the same thing I asked myself. I said, again, like, this visa's problem, am I going to continue being fooled like this? And I asked the woman, you mean this person I just described does not live here? She said, no, and there's nobody like that here. So that was when I just gave up this whole thing, and I was... So... That was when I just decided that, you know what, I'm done with this whole stuff. Enough of the, the cheating me, duping me, enough of my desperation just to get this visa. Because if this kind of person, with the way he described himself, the kind of respect I gave to him because of the title attached to his name could do this to me, then I was like, you know what, it's over. I just have to give up on this visa issue and relax. And God is going to do it when he's going to do it. So... I'm just trying to tell you, like, to encourage those people out there that are relying on visa agents. There is nothing like visa agents. Who, let me be very honest with you. I have, okay, now I've been in the UK now close to eight years. And all within this short 
period of my time here, I've come to understand that the visa process to any country is straightforward. Every country has the requirements that they want you to fulfill before you, you are given a visa. As long as you're able to fulfill those requirements, you are good to go. Like, okay, for instance, here now, I remember when um, a friend of mine applied to come. She has been applying and applying and applying and applying. Like, she was using the same visa agent. She has been using different visa agents. They keep telling her stories, telling her stories. And the funny thing is that they keep calling very, very ridiculous amount of money. Like, the mo kind of money that they are even mentioning. Say, she said, she was like, she has never even handled that kind of money in her life. Oh. And I, she, I keep asking her, come, are you, the visa, is it taking you to heaven? Because if it is UK here, I don't know how UK visa will, you know, will be that expensive. But at the end of the day, she was able to gather, she, she went through, she got the, the, the requirements online, what they wanted, actually wanted for her from her, a visit visa. She went through it, she fulfilled everything, you know, she fulfilled everything, she made sure she ticked everything, and she was given a visa. So every time someone asks me, oh, how do I get a UK visa, I always tell them, listen, go to the website, it's gov.uk, go to the website, read the visa requirements, the procedures there on how to get a, a visa to the UK. As long as you're able to fulfill, get the, um, um, your um, invitation letter or um, hotel accommodation, whatever is needed from in that aspect, as long as you, have the, you can fulfill the financial obligations, as long as you can fulfill, they have a list of requirements. That is it. UK is not interested. Let me say UK in particular. They're not interested in how much you have it. If you have millions in your account, that's not the issue. All they're interested in is to see how the account runs, how busy that account is. They want to be sure that your account is active and not just dormant. Like you just go and collect millions of naira and dump it in your account. And when it's time for v um, your interview, you go and submit it. No. They want to be sure that that money is yours and that you're actually using it. Like you're running this account actively so when it comes to visa issues be very very wise there is nobody that knows any ambassador in any emb embassy nobody the only way you can get a visa like this is if you're a diplomat if you're working with your government your country's government government you have your government official or whatever that is the only way apart from that go and do it yourself save yourself the stress the heart attack the heartache save yourself the unnecessary duping because they only only collect money from you. As I am now, do you know that if I open my mouth and come out and say, oh, um, I can do UK visa, who we'll get some money, oh, yeah, everybody start donating money, get money, UK visa, UK visa. A lot of people, is gonna, people are going to rush, especially because they will be like, oh, she's even there, so she's going to make it easier. I'm just going to give you some bad lyrics and collect your money, and that is it. Nobody can do it better than you. Go online research what the, the 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 requirements are see if you can fulfill it once you can you submit your application and that is it I, I do a lot of people that have actually come through that means like they go online they do these things themselves they save their money save that money for your ticket and your shopping here and whatever it is do not pay to any agents there is nobody like that they're all going to give you stories because when you go on facebook now you know, social media is even making things more difficult for people you see a lot of people posing to be um, visa agents posing to be visa experts some of these people have not even left nigeria they've not even left their country they've not even left where they are some of them don't, some of them don't even have passports to travel but they want to do visa for you so be very wise. Mind how you waste money on these people because I learned the hard way. But at the end of the day, you know, God made a way. So if you do these things on your own, at the end of the day, you will still get the required results. So that's it from me. Good night.